So I've got to decide where I'm going to put my ETS pad and um, so I'm curious to know um, what everybody else thinks about where it should go. Thinking about building a, uh, a platform there so that when the birds trap in uh, I can, um, they'll sense, they'll land on the pad there or below a, a piece of wood or position it like this. That's within the loft but is this within the loft here as well because there's the door um, and so I have to open that door to for anything to get out so is that clusters inside the loft I know some people put their traps uh, and their pads by the door obviously this 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 pads too small for the size of this door but is that any different to having it there with that uh, hatch down so that's a hatch that's a door uh, I don't really know uh, the RPR a rules um, which are the, the, the rules that our clubs uh, have to follow. Uh, they say the position of the ETS sensors antennae will not be allowed on any landing boards or other external surfaces in such a way that when the loft is closed an electronic ring chip ring may be recorded by the electronic timing system installed. So which suggests that if you can close the doors or hatches and, uh, and the bird can't clock in then that's allowed. But then I've heard other people say that no the bird can't be allowed to um, fly back out again once it's fly uh, once it's flown in but then I've seen other people um, put their ETS boards on the floor with the doors open so that the birds walk in and clock in that way um, there's there seems to be loads of like, people using Sputnik traps and putting them either side of that so I'd be interested to see what people think um, or, or what their interpretation of the rules is, uh, are and um, and whether any other unions have different rules um, or, or, or more specific about what the rules are because uh, obviously I want to get it right and <clears throat> I've got a couple of options really and um, so yeah before I commit to it I just want to make sure that I'm not breaking any of the rules um, so yeah if you could leave a comment that'd be great if the pad was there once that's closed the birds can't get in and time in so the loft is closed and the pads inside then they can time in but they're not trapping in so you can still get out if they they could clock uh, technically they could land there and then they could fly away um, which I'm not sure if that's that counts I know some people say the birds need to be trapped so that they can't fly away but then I don't think anybody has ever said that you can't clock in with the door open so if the pad was on the floor a bigger pad say and the door was open the bird could get in the loft clock but then turn around and fly back out again so I don't know if the rules are ambiguous there or what other people think I'm not sure I'm obviously I haven't I haven't raced yet and I'm a few months off so I just want to make sure that I follow all the rules when it comes to it I don't want any uh, complications with it this pigeon then that's ours wait there I didn't even know that was missing how did you get out You thirsty? You are, aren't you? Must have been, I don't even remember that one being out. That's it. Right, it's the middle of the week and the birds have had a few flies this week so far. Um, I don't fly them on a Saturday because we're on a on a, a line of flight that a lot of birds seem to use a lot of people train over the uh, over the village or at least by the side of this road so I have to try and let them out when I can during the week and um, they're, they're, the birds are on darkness which is trying to force the molt um, for them before the, the early bird season starts in July um, and this is obviously this is the first time I've ever raced them so uh, I'm just sort of winging it so to speak and um, they're looking pretty messy they're looking pretty scruffy uh, I've got birds in two sort of age groups I've got the first ones and then the, the the second group I got about two three weeks after and you can really tell the difference between the two that the older ones are all just tatty they look like worn out teddies and so I'm, I'm giving them plenty of food and they're not flying as much as they probably would do if they'd already gone through the mold they're not flying very far and one of the guys at the club told me uh, at the weekend that when you put young birds on darkness they don't tend to roam so I don't know if that's true I don't know if anybody else has that 
or, or has found that. Um, but it'd be interesting to see because I let mine up and occasionally they go off for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but for the last week or so, they've just been sort of loft flying around the house and not going far at all um, and not going very high either. So I don't know if that's weather related or it's because they're in the molt and they're just not, they don't have the energy and the feathers aren't that, that great at the moment. So um, I've given them a bath just now and it was covered. Um, the, 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 I think three or four of them got in and then there was just this horrible like film that, that was uh, sat on the surface. So I think they were ready for that. They're all happy now anyway. I'm currently feeding them uh 50 50 mix between breed and wean and um, without maize um and i'm not sure if i should be giving them the ones that are in the moat i'm not sure if i should be giving them something a little bit you know more protein and oils or something to help them with that uh with the malt but obviously they've got to create lots of new feathers and protein is the thing for them to do that so um i've tried giving them some peanuts but they just don't seem interested in the peanuts at all which is bizarre because a lot of people have said that's really good they'll do anything for them but i've not found that so far with these perhaps i've got to get them addicted to it but you can see all the feathers there's loads of feathers coming off them at the moment and some of them are looking pretty tatty like this one here doesn't look too bad so there's obviously a later youngster um but then white tip is knocking around in there somewhere and she's looking ooh, the right mess um yeah that's one there look if you look at the head and if you can see the head of that one it's all pretty scruffy uh, and this one here is another good example this is 1985 is it 83 looking scruffy which one are you 1989 so this is the first one um the white one there in the back that's one of the oldest ones i've got which is ryan not brian that's what uh, my son named it and uh archie and then jasper named that other one mush mush um, and they look actually pretty good. Um, Ryan, not Brian, had a bold neck a week or two ago and the feathers are coming back really nicely. So um, some of them are starting to look a little bit better but others look an absolute wreck. So there we go.